Welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is BSL 18 Hasuli round of eight by Agstra going up against Klaasu. Kind of a sick day commentary. The last couple ones I've been doing while I've been feeling under the weather. Worst of it was last night, so hopefully I'm on the mend. I don't feel like I give Klaasu enough credit in game one. I love his playstyle. Bottom left in corner, Klaasu starting as the great Terran up right in corner. We got by Agstra starting as the red Protoss. I'm expecting potentially more of the same. This is on Citadel. Again, a very, very large map. Which I don't know if that's going to give by extra reprieve or it's going to make things even better for Klauso. Uh, Klauso seems to like, from what I can tell, this is kind of got the word from, I think it was Irob in chat, which I really appreciate what he's saying. I was like, what's the word on Klauso? And Klauso is a very good German Terran, likes applying pressure, has very good Vulture Micro, and I just like that pressure play he throws. Uh, in this instance, he'll probably want to grab the 6 o'clock base and go for a positional place from there. It's a wide open area in the middle of the map and there's a little bit there are some doodad areas to pressure in there's obviously this large ramp area but i'm wondering if it'll be a little bit more defensible for by it's also a little bit of a larger map citadel it's a huge map so might have more space to garner defense but oftentimes what happens i love klaus style of play i really enjoy watching it honestly it's something i could see taking him to the finals and i would not be shocked to see him in uh finishing in the top two if not the top four with this by has got his work cut out for him i don't want to count him out just yet but uh previous match one thing i was gonna so oftentimes what happens in tvp right is you end up with if terran ends up with a reset army and protoss has a decent economy oftentimes protoss units just build faster and are cheaper so more often than not army resets as long as the protoss player has a solid economy behind it works in favor of protoss but you wouldn't think so the way klauso played last match just relentlessly rallying troops i think oftentimes reinforcing with vultures and goliaths which are a little bit cheaper it looks like he's going to scout out bottom right he is opening up barracks you should have checked the timing on that barracks uh, barracks into refinery do have three scv moving in so it looks like we're probably going to see a faster gas play we have a Aggressive slash defensive zealot being constructed. And a probe making its way cross map bottom right hand corner. Klauso checking first. So I think by X are going to end up with a bit of an interest. So checking mid map just in case. Never mind. Now he's going to go bottom right. I thought he was just going to go all the way bottom right. Has got a fast assimilator as well as that cybernetics core up. And the zealot starting to make its way across the map. I wonder if it's going to go top left. So he wants to put that zealot in his opponent's face. Factory building, first marine. Unfortunately, I feel like in this scenario, oftentimes what ends up happening is, is the zealot. It's kind of like the you build that initial zealot and you you have a little bit more defense against early SCV marine style pressure things. But if you and sometimes you get lucky if a Terran's being greedy, right? And you press that zealot into their expansion and they've only only gone uh, barracks. They've gone barracks straight into command center and they skimped on early marines. But in the situation where you go the three marine uh, vulture opening, like Klauso is right here. I feel like oftentimes you end up accidentally or more directly donating that first zealot. So base has been found bottom left and corner. First marine is able to box out that probe. The zealot's making its way bottom left. It does come down to micromanagement overall, but I feel like three marines, especially at this level, end up getting micro pretty, pretty well against that zealot, assuming there's not a lot of lag in between. SFE's retreating in the Dragoon. It looks like it wants to meet up. So one advantage of this is a zealot plus a Dragoon does Stack up much more favorably in that first vulture was skipped. Actually, Klauso might be in a bit of trouble now. So a zealot and a dragoon pressing the front. We have three marines. The zealot and the dragoon beat that, and the bear the bunker has not yet started. If the zealot gets in front, this is some damage that could be wrought. So by extra sees it, presses forward, is now damaging that marine, and the vulture not there alongside. It would have been tough either way. And that's going to be a delayed natural expansion. So Klauso getting caught a little bit, trying to opt them. I think he was thinking this is a giant map. I'm probably not going to see that pressure. Probably going to see a skip. And now cleverly dropping that, that barracks to go ahead and get some additional Marines out, but also create a bit of a barricade where the Zelt and the Dragoon aren't quite able to freely walk across. He is going to be able to re-grab this, but there's still heavy delays on this natural expansion. So early wins here for Biagster. Damage SCV blockading. Four Marines produced, we don't see, and it looks like we do see a fifth Marine queued up. So I'm wondering if Klaus is thinking about, never mind, he's going to go ahead and cancel that and move out with what he's got. Second Dragoon here, though. So there is a world where Biaxter can still fight this back. Yeah, this is, oh man, this is looking rough from Klaus so early. Because this, yeah, all the Marines gone, he's accidentally attacking his machine shop. Again, delayed that natural expansion. So Biaxter getting a lot of value here to start. Catching... 
Klauso, and that's just kind of the difference. You can see how razor thin it is. Additional Dragoons, this is... I'm surprised he rallied that third Dragoon up here. So it's two Siege Tanks now, but the two Dragoons against the tank and a half, plus those SCVs, by extra st again, still might be able to get some additional damage done. Especially once this fourth Dragoon, if he can keep this Dragoon alive. Once you have four Dragoons, if he can position the damaged Dragoon to the rear, those four Dragoons can do a lot of damage to those Siege Tanks. I think it's a double shot. You can start really sniping. I think range is done. We got two gateways, a Nexus up, a great early start here from Biaxer has taken out a lot of SCVs. The group repair on those siege tanks, just to be sure. And yeah, now it's three siege tanks though. So, but does he get that siege tank? So he is gonna be able to get a siege tank. And now that he's down to the three count, ooh, nice blockade by Klauso, shifting around and punishing him for the greed. So he's gonna trade one tank for four Dragoons. And that is gonna be a win for Klauso overall. So at least able to stabilize right there. Still not getting siege tech, getting vultures and mines instead. We have a Citadel of a Dune dropped behind this are we going to see dark templar on the map the vulture able to sneak across we do have a probe sitting at the 12 o'clock base maybe to grab a third right here third gateway down and a assimilator dropped as well i'm not sure if this is going to be a gateway to get dark templar out in the field or if this is going to be a gateway just to go for quick three base arbiter we'll have to see as this progresses for Bayaxer. he's got a lot of flexibility but klaus so finally stabilizing here the worker count somewhat close, but Klauso had a lot of delays, dropped a lot of siege tank, dropped a lot of SCVs, armory down, and this base has been saturated for a lot longer. So by extra in a pretty good situation where he's pushing that tech, this might be a DT drop with his robotics alongside. This is going to be a delayed observer though, and that's going to give Klauso a degree of map control. He's actually, and this is Klauso things right here, moving out with those siege tanks and those vultures, maybe recognizing a lack. I wonder if he's recognized the lack of observers out in the field because this would be very risky against two gate observer or three gate uh or three gate observer a little bit rarer these days but here we've got a robotics coming in we got a slew of dragoons out but really nothing to counter the mines right this second i have i have to presume that klauso is noting the lack of observer movement clearing out the minefields and this that probe's still sitting as though it wants to grab that 12 o'clock, not yet taking... Yeah, and it looks like it's going to be a drop. We got DTs and a shuttle constructing. In the meantime, plus one weapons just starting. We do have some defensive detection here at the natural expansion and hugging the main. One issue with this is there. this is a wide droppable area. The Vulture's trying to sneak through. Nice! I like how Biaxer has staged these Dragoons, however. And that is causing Klauso to really get punished for his typical aggression. He's just bleeding off a couple of vultures here and there. And already in kind of a... He, he was already in a defensive situation where he needed to play catch up. And it's kind of hurting him right here. Siege tech... And this is another kind of Klauso thing I want to note. This is siege tech starting at the 8 minute mark. So prioritizing getting vultures, vulture speed, etc. Off a single machine shop and really delaying that. And so allowing his vultures to be kind of the aggressive... Uh, defensive slot so it looks like bags are going to grab that 12 o'clock behind a dt drop so wants the dts to keep klauso preoccupied while he tries to cap a further economic lead klauso suddenly two workers up in the midst of this but i i do feel like his tech is somewhat further behind except for the observer the observatory has not pumped a lot of observers here at this stage we just have this single observer moving out mid-map. I'm wondering how much that provides a cue. Let's see if Klaus was prepared. He doesn't have a lot of siege. Keep in mind, he doesn't have tanks sieged yet. He's only got the two siege tanks at the front. The vultures are way far afield. So this Dark Templar drop potentially has a lot of punch to it. We'll have to see. So Dragoons creating a distraction mid-map as the DT is able to get... They're going to drop right on top of that turret. And that turret's not long for life. Oh, this is going to be disastrous now for Klaus. So... Try, and he still has not got that compsat station up either. So now going to lose all of that mining time at the main. A lot of troops were out of position. It looks like I missed this. He's grabbing the 6 o'clock location in the midst of this. But this is going to be immense amounts of damage. Your mine's going to be sufficient. So there's a compsat. He doesn't have enough defense troops, though, to clear this out. He's only got the two vultures. Never mind. He was able to take out one of the DTs with it. The other DT sneaking out for the moment. Going to go ahead and let that compsat filter out the second one dropped does he manage to get it unfortunately the dark temple are not able to juke but a significant amount of damage done i'll be interested to see if i think things are going in uh, he's got the supply lead he's looking for baxter's got that 12 o'clock base up but i do want to note that klaus has grabbed the six o'clock 
most of his siege tanks are staged out here. Plus one weapons feels uh, a lot later than it usually is. It looks like we have the Calderon amulet upgrade and an Arbiter on the way, by the way. So I think by Axter, I think the story of this game thus far is by Axter going to continue to cap at least the tech lead. But this is, it's not out of the realm of possibility that Klauser comes back into this because he's got this third base established. His worker count's still fairly healthy. And he can still, and it's such a large cross distance map that what he potentially can do is, yeah, just sit back, get his upgrades up, maybe uh, continue to funnel vultures mid map, make sure the, make sure that spider mines are planted, maybe even harass up. There's only three dragoons here at the 12 o'clock right this second. The vultures look like they're going to cycle all the way to the north. Let's see if they are just going to sideline. Well, a few of them getting taken out. Nice body blocking and more vultures getting bled off. So never mind right there. Observer face planning into that turret as well. Kind of one of those Looney Tunes run into a wall situations there. Uh, we do have a control tower potentially for drops. I don't, the vulture drops could be strong. I don't think that's going to end up being utilized though. We do have double machine shop finally in place, a fourth and I presume a fifth factory. We should see a surge in the factory count shortly from Klaus because he does have the six base or sorry, the, the six o'clock base up and running. The refinery being built, so that's going to put him at three gas. We can re uh, really sustain a lot of production. And he's got a pretty healthy worker count. He does want to fill in a few more SCVs, but he will have the, the production to work with it. So, and he's got that second armory in place. Yeah, he can just sit back over that plus uh, three play for right there. It looks like by are going to go, uh, move out and grab his fourth base. But really, the trick here is, is you're going to have Arbiters that are going to have a lot of energy, particularly with the, the uh, upgrades... Caldera and Amulet upgrade. Did I miss that? Was that for... Yeah, so, never mind. Sidestorm being upgraded as well. I think that's for by Temple. This is a sick commentary sort of thing. Not sick where it's awesome, but sick where my brain isn't functioning as well as it usually might. Um, He's going to have Arbiters with a lot of... Oh, poor probe stuck back there. He's going to have a lot of Arbiters with a lot of energy. He's going to have Stasis to work with. Might have a decent amount of Sidestorm in between as well. Vultures looking to make their way out. This is the third time they've tested this 12 o'clock area. And Byaxer is continually reinforced. He's just checking it, looks like, to make sure that 3 o'clock base... Or, sorry, that third base... That fourth base wasn't taken at the interior mineral only, it looks like. But again, is going to end up donating some vultures here to the north. So, solid defense. Byaxer at a very healthy supply count. No uh, forge upgrades as of yet, but is... Pushing up the gateway count, getting some good high temp. So he's going to have tech to work with here and potentially some recall uh, as well. Looks like we have a science vessel in production. That gateway count surging up to eight and a couple mines in anticipation of potential reaver drops. We do have, it looks like several turrets being planted along that right hand side wall. There is a world where a drop comes from this angle or a recall comes from this angle and in interior. The natural expansion also very recallable. Uh, but the factory lines in the main look like they'd be a little bit harder to penetrate. A lot of vultures cycling across. Really, Klaus has donated a lot of vultures behind in supply, but this is a situation where he can just sit back on on the bases he's got and hit max supply, wait for the upgrades to be there. But in the, And where he's wanting to get value out of these vultures in the meantime, by Baxter just completely stymieing all of those attacks, the vultures just running headlong into Dragoons. We have an Arbiter along that left-hand side looking like it's staging up for a recall. This could be a... Oof. Part of the hard part with recall for Protoss is, is sometimes it's a, a double-edged sword where you end up just donating something to your opponent. And I think the angle of attack that Byaxter is uh, planning with all of the mines in particular, if he gets a recall off successfully, I think he's just going to end up donating supply. So never mind, it was the... Uh, the Arbiter energy upgrade before, the, now the High Templar energy upgrade between, by the way. So yeah, moving in is going to get past the initial two turrets. Does get the recall off. Wow, he's actually pocketed right behind. He found the perfect spot for this drop. Holy cow. I didn't think there was a spot he could get through. And he's going to be right next to that armory, which would be a huge victory if he can land it. High Templar in, in between. I'm not sure he got a lot of Psy Storm off. It looks like the... So he's got a lot of Psy Storm to work with. He's starting to chew up the turrets. But just being, if he can wipe out that, ooh, Psy Storming a lot of the siege tanks as they're making their way up. If he can take out that armory, just delaying that plus uh, two weapons will be a big win. So 
able to carve out a few supply depots, pick off a few siege tanks here and there. Did end up donating some troops. Klaus is actually able to even up the supply count in between here. And wow, he's managed to grow that siege tank count to a very, he uh, very healthy, very healthy uh, count right there. Looks like by extra in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and try to stage up and take that three o'clock base. Klausa may be thinking about grabbing bottom right. We have another Arbiter staging up for an additional recall. Klauso starting to stream across the map. <coughs> he's hit and he's like, I'm near 200 supply. Not going to worry about it, but in the meantime, let's zoom in so we can see the drop. The drop engaging here at the 6 o'clock. And that's sending, you can see the gray redirecting now <coughs> across the map. Unfortunately, so SCVs are getting wiped out. That was a big hit to the SCV. Count right this second. Zelts are going to stream across. It looks like maybe able to chew up those siege tanks. Unfortunately, lifting up that command center. Yeah, it might save the command center, but allowed those Zelts to at least get a siege tank. Command center burning. There is an SCV hidden underneath repairing it. But also, some of the Klauso engaged mid-map. And by Axe are coming in a little bit piecemeal. I'm not sure if Klauso is able to focus on this. A lot of Psy Storm dropping. And he's at a... This is when it's just Dragoons versus Siege Tanks. It's usually when you want to back up. But Klauso able to get a little bit of a foothold on the interior position here in the mid-map. Tanks unseaging. They still have defense matrix along that edge, but supply counts are surprisingly even. So not as strong as you would uh, as what would be typically out there on a previous match, but now the Arbiter moving up, which could very rapidly equalize things. We got three siege tank under stations, so we have enough to clear it out otherwise. Zealots right on top of those forward siege tanks. That cloaking right there, we do have a science vessel to penetrate the cloak, <coughs> but a lot of troops getting wiped out underneath otherwise, so it looks like a lot of these troops gonna get cleaned up pretty easily. So losses for Klauso across the board. He's now got, ooh, nice mine at the end there, but still down 20 supply. Byaxter's got that three o'clock base up. He has not yet grabbed an additional base and his main is mined out, so. And this is oftentimes what I'll see with the with the aggro Terrans, is what can be kind of the Achilles heel is, is the continued pressure without in the face, uh, so sometimes it works out where if you, ooh, nice EMP, where you're able to just continually apply pressure and therefore expand behind it, like we saw Klauso game one, but there are other situations like this where Byaxer has a decent enough economy that he can t continually engage into it, or maybe even sneak around with an, a recall behind enemy lines to stop additional bases from ge uh, getting established. And as a result, you end up with a Terran army that peters out and just doesn't have quite the doesn't have enough uh, sustained economy to to roll through. Vulture checking the top left, at least able to confirm a lack of an expansion right there. I haven't heard a lot of comsat, so there's the comsat flurring off. I'm not sure if it's army checking or whatnot. We've got a massive amount of gateways here from Byaxter, so I think Byaxter, ooh, his main and natural are just about mined off. That is uh, mined out. That is putting him to three bases, but that's basically three bases versus one. So it's going to come down to Byaxter's. Um, Macro and also his army engagement right here. <coughs> High Templar have to be careful because they're somewhat exposed to the forward map here. Byaxter now moving in. Zealots leading to go ahead and clear those mines. It's allowing the High Templar to make their way forward. Storming at least some forward siege tanks. And it looks like this is enough for Byaxter to go ahead and push through. So, really good mine clearage. Initially, another defense matrix to keep that siege tank in a little bit longer and this is again problems for Klauso where he doesn't so it's one thing when you're doing this off four production four base production and your Protoss opponent is only one base up on you in this situation by Axter has three full mining bases compared to kind of the one and a half for Klauso right here given the I guess with the worker count it's like the the full two but point being by Axter has got a strong economy to work with behind this and it's definitely showing in the supply count not to say that it's over yet because by Axter donating a few troops to mines that's something that happened in game one as well a Dragoon absorbing a lot of those mines, though, so it's going to open up the forward field. Arbiter dodging back. It's not that far away from having a good stasis, and this is a lot of units to stasis up. It looks up like Aster. Yeah, he's going to back up. I, I, th I think as long as he backs up and makes sure this bottom right-hand base, or these additional bases, it looks like there is a command center being built on the interior bottom left-hand corner here. If you can stop that base from going up and make sure Klauso isn't able to establish it, 
he's going to be in a great position for the long term. Also, if he grabs an additional base for himself in the meantime, right now, kind of positioning around, is still near 200 supply. we got another Arbiter moving forward. I'm wondering if that's going to turn into additional recall. Vulture's getting caught out midfield. How are the upgrades? Looks like level 2 weapons has now finished. Finally, this is a very late plus 2 weapons. We have Hallucination also upgrading, I want to note, just in case. I suppose. I think Bioxter has the resources to spend, so he's just doing what he can. And now are we going to see a recall over that mineral? Only another recall into the main. It looks like the recall making its way to the factory lines. On top of the factory lines, some mines going off. Softening up some of these attack forces. We do have some High Templar Storm devastating the vultures as they're making their way across. And the Zelt's trying to filter in, trying to find something. This is a big distraction for Klaus, so he's moving out. We don't have a second punch attack. Looks like Baxter was thinking about attacking bottom left if that was in his opponent's hand, but not finding anything there. I do want to note that it looks like might get some supply depots. I don't think he's going to get a lot else out of this. But looking for... He's got another Arbiter staging for it. It looks like... Is this going to be another recall to the 6 o'clock? Potentially. A lot of, again, a lot of supply for Bayaxer. He just needs to find places where he can use it. It looks like he realized the, the area that was evacuated was potentially the 6 o'clock corner. If he moves forward and stasis a lot of this, instead of using that recall, he oh loses the Arbiter, unfortunately. But if he just walks these troops into the 6, he might be able to get some value out of this. Instead, it looks like he's going to try to attack the army head up. That's allowing Klaus to reinforce and get those siege tanks established. Some nice side storm in the midst of this. But yeah, by Axer, unfortunately, donating troops and not getting a lot of value for it. He's still in a pretty strong economic position, though. So not over yet, but Klaus will clawing back. He's now got an... So he's he's no longer mining at the natural expansion. He's still mining well at the 6 o'clock. And in the interior left-hand corner, I want to note this is not a... It is a mineral-only base. Although Klaus is a little bit hurting on minerals. I'm wondering if he's going to jump right up to the 9 o'clock. We do have an observer in position. But by Axer grabbing bottom right... We have a vulture and a mine guarding that location. Another vulture guarding top left. And an arbiter with about enough energy to go for another recall. My only concern for Bayaxer is he's in a position to win it right here. 30 supply up. But needs to start getting the value trades and doing some... And Klaus is going up. Oh, if Klaus is able to honestly cap this 9 o'clock and get a healthy worker count into there, we could see a, a shift in fortune. Also want to note that the mineral only looking a little bit light. The 12 o'clock looking light. So Baxter does need to establish some additional bases for himself. And Klauso finally able to get these vultures on Baxter's side of the map. Filtering them to the north. Wonder if he's going to take a stab at the 12 o'clock. So Observer sees the movements that direction. The probes are transferring to bottom right. That base could easily get grabbed. It looks like the vulture is going to go ahead and turn around and get a minefield up. In between, we have another army stage mid-map for Byagster. Trying to keep track of where Klauser's army. It looks like he's got most of it staged to defend the 6 o'clock. But another pocket of it here at the 9 o'clock. Byagster starting to crash down at the mineral only. So right between Klauser's two staging areas. Doing a good job of pulling the Arbiter, getting a stasis on at least two of the siege tanks. I think he's going to be able to focus fire down that command center as SCVs are also in transfer. So great value attack here from Byaxter, killing a lot of SCVs. That's dropping the worker count to 42 for Klaus. So he's probably going to lose this command center. And now Byaxter can... Now the trick is just back right back out for Byaxter. Don't donate the troops. Find value someplace else. Because Klaus, has, even though he's got these stasis siege tanks... Walking into that siege line, uh, not a victory. And Klaus is trying to claw his way back into that. Looks like he's donating troops by Axer's direction. I would just peel back out or push into these three siege tanks and take care of that 9 o'clock. That might be another solution. That army getting split in two. Some more Zelts streaming across here from by Axer. If the Zelts go immediately to the 9 o'clock or engage the siege tanks to the south as they're not sieged, could be great. Plus two weapons, by the way, on Byaxter's side. So the siege tank's retreating. We do have some Dragoons and Zealots going to clear up that last siege tank at the 9 o'clock. And so they're going to be able to free reign. 
into the nine o'clock. Might be able to stymie that, but Byaxer was able to crush what was the remnants of that Dragoon attack force and pocket back in, but still a big win for Byaxer. Able to, so now we're looking at what you typically see in this situation is a nice army rebuild. So some nice macro from Byaxer. And he's dropped Klauso's worker count to an anemic 36. Absolutely sickly. <coughs> kind of like, yeah. Kind of like my situation right now with my uh, physical health. Nine o'clock base. SCV is going to go ahead and stage. We do So now we've got, so bottom right mining. The bottom right hand corner hasn't been grabbed quite yet. That vulture going to suicide on that cannon line. Three o'clock base up. Mineral only. Looks like it's just about to get mined out. Byaxter should really think about grabbing an additional base in the midst of this. He's still got a decent sized bank. Klauso lifting off. Which base did he lift off? Was it his main? Lifted off his main to go ahead and regrab that mineral only. And needs to queue up. Uh, yeah, he's already queuing up some more SCVs in construction. Byaxter clearing the mine bottom right, going ahead and grabbing that nexus. And it looks like he might want to establish that interior mineral only. He's, uh, I think, checking it to make sure there weren't mines. To position to do that. Six o'clock base is not long for life here. Not a lot of resources left. There are a couple idle SCVs there as well. But Klauso getting that economy reestablishes at half the supply right this second. Look at this. Some there's the hallucination upgrade in play. Two hallucinated arbiters making the way around, and I think this is going to be a recall targeted at the six o'clock location. Certainly going to be able to get in, and Klaus is going to have a lot of trouble here because he's got a lot of siege tanks. At the 9 o'clock location, and very little here at the 6 o'clock. So this could be a very powerful recall. And that is a lot of troops. A few mines go off, but that is not going to be sufficient. That's it. And Klauso needed that to work with. So it's going to end up losing some turrets. going to end up potentially losing this command center. Great play. Cycling back around. Just going to go chase down that command center. Ooh, the Zelt's going to donate their lives on the way out to some mines, unfortunately. And Bayaks are going to actually, on top of that, escape with a lot of that army. I like that on Bayaks' part. A lot, of, uh, a lot of Protoss players will just donate the rest of their attack force in that situation, which can put them behind, honestly. Command Center going to try to redrop. But this is still giving Bayaks more time to resaturate a lot of these troops. Does he manage to... This was, was, this was a problem pre previous match was the, the lack of resaturation. It looks like he is resaturating a lot of those workers. Where I think that's one thing that confused me the prior match. Now I'm giving myself excuses. But there was like the healthy worker count for Byaxer, but a lot of them were idle at bases. This time it looks like the workers are going to get to fresh expansions, maintaining that lead. So Byaxer correcting that. Now, honestly, we'll have to see how it goes map by map, but Byaxer looking strong. 50 supply lead right this second, clearing out the minefield. Klaus is in trouble because our upgrades, level three plus one, which is solid, but he's been really sequestered to the bottom left hand corner of this map and hasn't shown a lot of ability to break out. He's just had to absorb a lot of attacks from multiple directions. Science vessel goes down. And Byaxter has been able to filter around and just really stretch that troop count thin. Oh, he's going to dive into this headlong. This might not be a winning fight, though. A lot of siege tanks pretty well spread. He might just have too much and be able to barrel through. Psystorm not going to be... Psystorm and Stasis not going to be a massive help because of the spread on the siege tank. But never mind. There's just too much from Byaxter. Or able to just push straight through this. That was the Ogre Fist smash right there. That siege tank got a great shot clearing some of that, though. So a lot of troops bled off from Byaxer, but here's the thing. He's got the economy behind this where he can filter it back in no issue. More siege tanks moving up. So Klaso might be able to save this 9 o'clock. But now this is really boxed in where a good, yeah, a nice stasis and a Psystrom behind it. Unfortunately, Byaxer has run out of steam right here as far as the forward army. He's got more army staging around and still has some Dragoons getting some damage done. In between another 30 supply lead, but with all these gateways humming, should be able to ref uh, refill that supply count pretty rapidly. Upper left-hand corner also getting grabbed. So Klaus was basically having to sit and defend measly crumbs of territory while Bayaxter is just feasting on the rest of the map, is what's happening here. Absolute greedy. Hasn't grabbed the gas here. 
So, and you can see that in a little bit of a gas distribution problem for Biaxter. Um, but, oh, and here we got some idle probes. This, this was a problem previous match. <coughs> so hopefully Biaxter. So he's technically running on two base, but it's still two base versus, well, it's two base versus two base, but still with a big bank. And that can mean a lot of zealots, and those zealots are in a pretty good position. We also have this additional base going up, so one problem for Biaxter, he might even want to recall these probes, is going to be able to get those workers to the upper left-hand corner, or to bases that are a little bit more productive. And Klauso macroing well, but a little bit, a little bit hurting on supply count. Biaxter are sweeping around, looking for another attack. I don't know that there's a lot of value here to be had at the six o'clock. This is basically a mined out base, but gonna test the southern corner and force Klauso this direction. That is moving him away. Feels a little bit like a potential troop donation, but again, Biaxter with the superior economy can afford to push into Klauso and donate some troops as long as it keeps him busy and keeps him from expanding and grabbing additional territory. Looks like we are this Arbiter staging up as though it wants to go for another recall here into the six. I'll be curious to see if it in fact does. Never mind, we got another we got a recall at the nine o'clock, so it was just positioning to draw those troops out of position. Great play from Biaxter. Wow. So drawing the troops to the south and then immediately kind of on a null target and then able to shut down that nine o'clock in turn. And he's got another attack force nearby where he can push into the six if there's an over dedication of troops here, maybe even walk all the way into the main. So great play. Let's see if these troops start getting active here in a second. Maybe they're just going to sit back and try to defend bottom right overall. Again, a massive bank for Biaxter. All This is still a lot of siege tanks, but all the siege tanks... And you, you usually will not see a Terran DG while they have this sort of siege tank count. Vulture still active here top left, dropping an emergency mine to try to deny that. A rebuild of a command center at the 9 o'clock. And we have another recall making its way towards the main while all of those troops are at the 9 o'clock position. This is going to be right on the juicy factory lines as well. And it is going to... And now, yeah, Klaus are recognizing... Is he going to... No, he's going to try to go back and fight that off. Certainly going to be some dead factories, dead supply depots as a result of this. It looks like he was thinking about making a movement top left, but these are big... Especially taking out the factory lines. Especially the ones with the machine shops attached. This is a lot of stuff getting... Targeted. Oh, is he going to end up missing out on plus two armor? Yeah, plus two armor denied as well. And now Klauso in the red. Secondary attack moving up to cut off the vultures that were staging up briefly to try to do something top left. You can see the siege tanks moving in bottom left. And this is all but one now for Biaxter. Great play, and I love the positional play late game. Drawing the troops to the six o'clock and then going for, uh, uh, going for a counter storm. Or sorry, counter... Arbiter drop at the 9 o'clock, and then recalling into the main, just absolutely scattering Klauso all directions. Absolutely brilliant. I'm trying to think of like a world of Genghis Khan style movement. Genghis Khan not really known for his tactic. Caesar, Caesarian? That doesn't sound right. Brilliant play. Very uh, classic general, generalissimo style action right there. And keeping, it looks like he's got the three bases, so he did uh, saturate those probes around, get him top left in the meantime. So everything going right for Biaxer this time, and it is, yeah, surprised we haven't seen a GG from Klauso yet. Maybe it's because he does have a lot of siege tanks behind this. And every once in a while, you got to feel as a turn. If I got enough siege tanks, maybe a Protoss will be dumb enough to throw armies away. Although he is, uh, looks like armies are getting thrown away a little bit. So SCVs, fling, yeah, it's still full. As long as you have a full control group of siege tanks, it's still, I think as a turn, they're going to fight it, just in case. But in the meantime, full supply for Biaxer, double the supply of Klauso. Klauso trying to get some mining working for him. He does have, it looks like the uh, mineral only, very, very thin. So you're going to reestablish that 9 o'clock. Some High Templar are wandering in, not able to get side storms off. So it looks like troops are getting donated, but we have an Arbiter out there in the field. We got some, we do have gateways bottom right just in case. Vultures streaming out, maybe trying to hope they can find something like an army, some High Templar to pick off, something along those lines. I do want to say, uh, Klaus has made it hard on Biaxter, where 
by Axter's taken three fourths of the map right this stage. And Colossus still not fully dead. <coughs> so, solid play in that regard. But it looks like we got a series. Just waiting for this army to either get side stormed or, or just uh, run over. How many factories do we have remaining? So it looks like we still got a, a number of factories remaining, not that they can produce as much. The siege tanks for Klaus are starting to move up here, top left. Getting caught mid-siege, though. Beautiful side storm on top of... Well, beautiful... Side storm, not the best, but beautiful engagement there by Axter. Able to peel out more siege tanks that Klaus cannot afford to lose. Arbiter drops, but not before he's able to get a stasis, and that's certainly going to be GG, because now there's just not a lot of siege tanks remaining for Klaus either. He's got five siege tanks to his name, it looks like. Again, down to half the supply. Bayaxter easily just going to be able to sidle in here. Well, able to clear siege tank with their dying breath, able to thin the troops out a bit, but... I guess Klauso wanted to punish the SCV lines for next match, where it's like, feel the lightning, this is what you deserve when you aren't able to keep production up. The beatings will continue until morale improves. Arbiter's wiped out. Command Center trying to float out here top left, just hoping there's nothing there. And I take it back, it looks like there's four siege tanks remaining. But all it's going to take is one... 174 supply, 100 supply of army. For Bayax to write the second. Yeah, the command center is going to float up and find that base already taken. So worst case scenario here for Klauso. I'm going to try to retreat. I'm waiting for the GG here, honestly. For Klauso overall, because this is he's not going to be able to push into what's left. A few Vulture, uh, just spending what is left in the resources. I do maybe just kind of treating it like a finals match. Able to pick off a few High Templar there. <coughs> Looks like he was able to get a few more Siege Tanks up. Trying to assault what he can. Curious where the workers are moving to the 12 o'clock here. All Byaxer has to do is his hotkey his armies up, though, and A move, and that should be it. Looks like that's coming right here. There's the A move. Stasis on the Siege Tanks. If you have these cliffside Siege Tanks, the Command Center still trying to shove its way forward. Providing scouting, maybe denying some hot king on the gas overall. Ooh. And a lot of mines in between. But I still don't think it's going to stop the A move here from Byaxter. Yeah, Zealot's now on top of the few siege tanks that are left. An emergency D matrix last second. Lasting very little time. Plus three weapons, by the way, for Byaxter. Now that 9 o'clock base has been cracked open. And now Klaus has nothing left. So 17 workers and plummeting. So I'm expecting a GG any second here. Few more, it looks like he's gonna donate. Yeah, there's GG. Well played both directions. And a fun match. And we we got a good series between these two, it looks like. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.